At this point in our video, we're going to go further on and insert different components to customize our PowerPoint. So once you have created slides here, you can change the formatting. This is on the Home tab. This is where the basic functions are going to be listed, such as changing the font and changing colors of the font and indenting the text and inserting shapes and one key feature here is that before I move on to something else here under quick styles under drawing here you can pick predefined styles on formatting certain sections of your presentation so now let's assume that you know how to create to add the new slides and we know also how to change the design of it now also you can change what's called the layout of the slides and you can have two two content slides so it's basically going to split the slide in half and have like multimedia content on the right or just the bullets on the left here and notice there are comparison comparison slides are blank so you change this according to your liking but the common one is the title with content inserting graphics and i have designed our slideshow here so that we actually have the different components that i'm talking about as I'm going through the tutorial. But usually you'd have a topic and you're covering the main aspects of the topic using PowerPoint. So inserting stuff or inserting other components in our presentation. So to do that, you'd go under the insert tab and notice you can insert tables, you can insert pictures, clip art, and all kinds of other stuff. So the most common one would be probably graphics or images from the web. And the easiest probably would be to just Google something. However, be cautious of copyrights for images and other components you get from the web. We'll assume here that uh, things are good. So we'll go, for example, let's say we go to a website and then we'll copy something from here. So let's say we want to copy this image. We right click on the image, choose copy image. And I'm using Google Chrome in this case. And then you'll go into your slide and then press paste. Notice in this case it's going to paste it somewhere in your slide, but you can uh, drag it by holding the mouse and then resizing it to how you'd like to resize it. If you'd like to crop this, notice uh, by the way, this on the very top here, it comes up with uh, picture tools because we are working with a picture. It gives us the picture tools and this is what's referred to as the contextual tools it's tools that the program gives to us or provides for us in the context of what we are doing so if we were to click on the image here note it and i'm double clicking actually on an image it will give us a new set of tools on this part of the ribbon here so we could remove the background we could change the color we don't have to be a graphics artist to change the design of this thing we simply use a theme. If you wanted to crop this, you click on crop here on the top and then resize this to your liking. I guess I dragged it, but that's how you do it. Okay, so that's how you insert images. You could insert also clip art. So if you click on insert under clip art and then it will search, for example, uh, web. This will go online and uh, bring us different images or clip art from the internet. Click on it and then move it to where you want to. Then resize it the way you'd like. And again, the tools, the contextual tools are available just like for the images. The next thing here, we are gonna to go to insert pictures. So pictures is very similar. You just browse the pictures, a folder on your local drive. So if I click on picture and then go under Let's say there's this image on my computer here. We could go to your pictures folder, wherever you keep your pictures. Just double click on it, drag it to wherever you want. Resize it, again, the same tools. Other things that you can insert are shapes. So if you click here under insert, and then we go under shapes, and this comes in handy if you wanted to illustrate certain components and you have animations, for example, uh, an arrow or something getting animated. The difference here for shapes is that you'd have to hold down the mouse 
and this is common for Microsoft Word or other Windows applications here, you hold down the mouse and then drag it as to however big you want to make this shape. Notice there's a green button here and you can resize or redirect it, change the direction of that arrow to how you prefer it. So that's the green button here. Once you resize it, now notice that there is also a drawing tools tab. And this again is the contextual tools. So if you double click on it, it gives you a whole bunch of options on modifying and working with this specific item. So now notice if we wanted to change the color or change it to a different template, we can very simply by simply choosing one of those themes. So that was uh, shapes. The next one is inserting hyperlinks. So hyperlink, you can hyperlink pretty much anything. It could be text in your slideshow, it could be an image, or it could be clip art. So if I wanted to hyperlink text, and hyperlinking is basically so when you're presenting something, you'd click on that item and it will redirect you to either open a document or open a website out there. So what you need to do is you'd need to first where you want to hyperlink. So let's say I want to, as soon as I click on this item, I want to go to CNN.com. So in this case, I select hyperlinks and then under the insert tab, I click on hyperlink and then type here, HTTP CNN.com. This could be a YouTube video. It could be whatever you want out there on the web. You just copy the URL and then you paste it under the address. Click OK. Now this item is hyperlinked. And if I were to present this to put it in presentation mode by clicking here on the slideshow or clicking under the slideshow up here and choosing to display it or pressing F5, when I'm presenting, I click on hyperlink that will take me there. Same thing here. I can hyperlink this item by simply clicking on hyperlink. And let's say I want to go to HTTP to CNET.com. And that is hyperlink. Now, for images, you don't really know whether it's hyperlinked unless you have, uh, you know, beforehand, basically. So now, if I were to present this, this is how it will display. And if I were to click on this image or on the hyperlink here in the bottom, it will take me to that specific site. Press Escape to get out of that mode, and then we are back. Other components that you can insert here are sound clips. And the sound clips come in handy if you're doing a presentation where you're not necessarily narrating something yourself live, but you want to just have a bunch of pictures or something continuously going. You could have sound in the background, or you could have sound for a specific slide, specific components within the slide. So to insert a sound clip, all you'd need to do is uh, go under Insert and then under audio, you click sound from file. So sound from file, it will be basically an MP3 file or some kind of file that you have somewhere stored on your computer. Now that you inserted the sound file, uh, you can click on playback options, and then you can choose to loop it until it stops, but this will stop start, this sound file will start as soon as you click on the item by default. If you want it to start automatically, you'll need to change it uh, here where it says start on click, you need to change it to play automatically. If you want it, this sound file or this song to play throughout all the slides in the slideshow, then you'd need to choose play across all slides. And notice there are further options here as well that you could rewind it, you could hide the icon so that you don't get to see it when you're presenting it and so on. But that's how you insert a sound file in your presentation. Next, we're gonna to go to inserting a movie clip. Now, most of the movies, uh, clips or so on are from YouTube nowadays and somewhere on the web. So you can simply use the hyperlink feature for those. However, if you have recorded a, a movie clip with your smartphone or something of that nature, and you have it somewhere in your hard drive, you can uh, go under the Insert tab, then under Video, and then choose Video from File. From Video from File, then you go under wherever you have your video, 
And here is, for example, a sample video. You click, you select it, click on insert, and then it's going to size it accordingly here. However, you can resize it to make it bigger. So here is um, our video. And notice again under playback, now we have the video tools. So under playback, you can change this so that it will start automatically or you, when you click on it. Notice you can also do a preview of it by either clicking under play over here or under the control bar on the very top bottom. And that's how it's going to display. Let's move on to another component that you can insert in your slideshow, and this would be the Smart Art. Smart Art actually is pretty cool in Office 2010 and 2007. So, uh, Smart Art basically, if you want to illustrate a concept, instead of you putting three bullets here, for example, in order to get um, A in a course, you need to study, attend, homework. And then the result, you'd say it's an A. Instead of demonstrating this concept this way through bullets, like we traditionally do, you can insert what's called Smart Art. So to insert Smart Art, you go under Insert, you go under Smart Art, and then you pick one of those designs from here, whichever makes sense for you. So in this uh, case, probably what would work for us is one of those processes here. And I'll pick specifically this one. Final. Now notice as you're working with Smart Art here, notice you have the area here to type the text. So you simply have to type the text for these components. So you say study or attend, study, homework, and note that this is more meaningful than just simply having a bunch of items here or bullets. Now notice as you're working with Smart Art, if you double click on it, notice now you have the Smart Tools, Smart Art Tools, and then this is where you can change the different colors, and the color theme. You can change the actual design, so if you're not happy with this specific design, you can change it to a different one. So it's more visual, it's intended to be more visual. If you delete this, uh, or if you close that little window, notice that on those corners here, there is um, this little triangle. This is how you can bring those menus back up. So if you want it on the right-hand side or on the left-hand side, depending on whether you have space, it will show up accordingly. Now these designs are specific to that design, so you can't keep on adding components here. So if I wanted to add a fifth one, notice that the other ones get deactivated. So it's designed to have only a certain number of them. Another very nice feature is um, actually converting, and this is where it could come in very handy for you, is you can convert, let's say I have these three bullets here, or these items you can convert these bullets into smart art. So you basically can take any slides and you can convert them to smart art. And the option is here under the paragraph option, or you can simply right click on the slide and choose convert to smart art, and then pick one of those items. So notice we didn't have to do anything fancy. It's customized it automatically by simply picking the design. Of course, these colors, you can change them, you can change the shapes, you can customize this further. So let's say this component in the background here, or one of those boxes, I wanted a different color. You can simply go and change it and customize it yourself by cl clicking on it, and then going on format, and then changing it to whatever you want. So that's basically a smart art, and it's a very powerful tool.